Hey there, everybody. So I am with my pal, Lara, and I have to tell you, <laughs> we've already had like an entire conversation. So I want to first introduce her because today we're going to look at the art of face reading because she is the bomb diggity expert in that. So first of all, Lara and I met five years ago on the phone because she was doing an interview and I can't even think of the woman's name, but it's okay. She was doing an interview. She was interviewing me for my chakra wisdom oracle cards and we had we just hit it off and i think you have the same birthday as my dad is that correct 26th of april yep april 26th so that was yeah. also one of those like ooh kind of things because <laughs> <laughs> i got her right away right yeah. so and by the way that's an interesting thing too we're going to talk about uh chris watts but i want to say even if you have different years, even if the birthday is the same, there's very similar energy that moves through people who share a birthday. And that's why you can kind of know them, right? So yeah. we promised that we'd talk about astrology another day. So I'm not going to get into that too much. Don't right get now. into astrology. Absolutely. I know because it'll be like, that'll be our four hour talk. So what we're going to do today, and, and Lara, first I'm going to ask you about face reading, um, we're going to talk about that for a minute, everyone. And then I've got pictures of Chris Watts before, right after the crime, and then in prison. And I'm going to, with Lara, we're going to discuss those three pictures. And just so you know, don't let her American accent fool you. She is Scottish. <laughs> I'll try my best. Yeah, you know, just, just, just kind of, you know, it's okay and all that. So, um, and we are definitely going to do, she has this fabulous, she got this fabulous, like, is it a castle or a manor? It's a manor up in Scotland. And Absolutely. Although it's got the turrets. It's got the turrets. Like it's a got a turret? Oh my gosh. Okay. So that means we're definitely going to do something woo probably this year, later in the year. A couple things I want to tell you about Lara as well. She is, she's an extraordinary healer in her own right. She has a lot of, of power that she brings to everyone she works with. And what she's going to do with us today is we're going to look at Chris Watts in terms of his, his evolution from dad to, you know, incarcerated murderer. And we're going to look at his face. And before we get into that, I am going to ask you a couple questions about this. And then I also want you to know that Lara is just starting up her YouTube channel. I will give you her link by the end of this so that you can definitely go in, follow her, you know, subscribe to her channel. And then as she's getting going, you'll see more things that she's putting up. So it's kind of a newbie baby channel, but she's fabulous. Yeah. Um, all right. So Lara, let's start with, um, let's start with face reading. What, how, how did you get into it and what do you think the power of it is? Well, I got into it because I was a medium for Paranormal Magazine over in the UK and astrologer. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for something a bit different. And at the time I was working between them and Prediction Magazine. And again, they were looking for something a bit different. And suddenly I got this download, this information going, I've got to do face reading. So I put it to both the magazines. Both of them were like, oh God, this is amazing. But there was a conflict further down the line because one wanted it and didn't want the other one to have it. But you know the score anyway, don't mm -hmm. you do publications. So I, I stuck with Paranormal Magazine because that's you know where you know my loyalty had been there. And it is a Chinese art, right? It, it is a bona fide, it's almost like an ology, you know, it's a science behind it, you know. And if you if you take everybody, if you take the hair away, you know, from the, the facial picture, the you hair. start to see, mm -hmm. yeah, and completely the hair, right? And actually, you then start to see that women, actually, some of them were looking like men. And men, you know, their features were very feminine. And I started to get intrigued because I thought, wow, so just a haircut can make the difference. I'm, I'm, my mum's a hairdresser. So oh. I was brought up in the environment, you know, of styling hair to suit the person, to suit the character individual. But it also hides a lot as well. So I dug a bit deeper. I then started to look at going into prisons and profiling criminals. But as you know, there's different types of criminals. To right. They're not murderers. You know, some of them, it can just be small crimes. And I started to become fascinated with what actually ascertains somebody to be a killer. You know, is it written in their face? Because you've got the palm readings, haven't you? You know, your life mm -hmm. being written in the lifelines and your palms. Mm -hmm. Then surely we've got lines in our face. We've got particular jawline structure, the position of the ears in relation to the nose, as I discovered as well. 
by reading for high profile criminals, I started to see a pattern. Mm. All right. I started to see that there was there were some characteristics that for me define the difference between somebody in a small petty crime to somebody that goes on or got the potential to go on um, and commit something major. Um, and the, you know, it's about the shape of the head in relation to the size of the brain, but also if you look at the way the hair grows in the face, if they're ma males for argument's sake, the position of their jawline, their teeth, um, probably as a result of hormones, maybe from birth as well, you know, like when the conception. Right. Um, then it actually gives you like a handprint, but in the face of what their potential is and, and, and what they actually end up being. All so right, you're, bringing so up, you're bringing up a good point when I just want to hit on two things that came forward to me right away were, of course, Shanann, who uh, Chris Watts, his wife, who he murdered, she, her mother's a hairdresser. So I find that very interesting when you look at those wow. kinds of, you know, and the woman who actually if you want to say rescued her, so to speak, she didn't rescue her, but she, uh, her friend, Nicole Atkinson is the one who f got to the house that day and said, where is she? She was also a former hairdresser. So it's kind of interesting wow. how that profession, I'm getting truth bumps, that, that profession yep. is surrounding this. So what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, Lara, is I want to put up the first picture. Do you want to look yep. at, uh, let's look at Chris first, and then we'll look at, I have one picture of Shanann, so I just want to look at the one, but let's uh, start with, this is Chris, let's see, sure, okay. So this is Chris uh, as he, I wonder if I can move us off the picture. Yes, I can. Okay, good. So this is Chris uh, early. This is obviously before anything happened. Um, and he looks happy and yeah, on the outside. Mm -hmm. What else do you see? What are the, some of the things oh, that I, it's probably going to be quite good? It, Tori will probably back me up in this. She will do is I know very little about this case, obviously, being oh. you know. An American case you know so and we wanted to keep it that way so that when I saw the pictures it was kind of right. like you know at first sight type thing so I get the he's actually got very symmetrical features when you look at him he's got very symmetrical features but a very mm -hmm. high forehead and um, but he's at first impression he's very well tailored you know his, his beard is trimmed within an inch of its life by the look of it um, if you take away the forehead bring you know like cover up the forehead right down to the eyes it's actually like he's got two parts of different heads and faces put together. That's how it looks to me. The ear positioning is the, the, the lobes, even though you can't see it there, the lobes actually do come right further down from where the bottom of the nose is. But I also see, and I think because I can't see it like fully blown there, um, mm -hmm. it looks like his facial hair is more grown, however, at one side than it is on the other. I take that back. It looks like he's got more under one nostril than he has the other. Oh, so not yeah. Is that right? Is that what it looks like? It kind of looks like that. Yeah. So that's a slight hint of something not perfect, whereas everything else looks perfect about him. Everything else is trimmed and I'm going, so he's got his, his facial hair and the hormones perhaps and the way that his hair grows mm -hmm. um, is a bit patchy in certain areas, but it is well covered. Mm -hmm. Being a hairdresser's daughter. Can I no, he's not. That? Oh, well, I was yeah. going to say he's no, not related. Okay, I forgot. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Me being a hairdresser's daughter, I'm kind of sort of looking past and going, yeah, the, the beard isn't, it's not like, you know, in some guys you get it all grown in and it's all even. He actually has a few patches and I think it's well cut in order to hide those patches, not cut for a style, but, you know, for a couple of different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly, the way I see that his eyes, his eyes work independently and his left eye, right, so I'm looking at it head on. So if you turn it around the other way, his left eye, which is opposite my right eye, um, looks completely different to the other eye. It's like the, his brain oh. is working in two different wave patterns, all right? And his teeth as well, they're not his teeth, surely, are they? They are, I think. Are they real teeth? I am. Uh... I know, <laughs> we're gonna take a vote on his teeth here. No, they're <laughs> real teeth, because his teeth, for me, I mean, they're white and they stand out. So they, they kind of, to me, You've got the, the, the white teeth, you know, when somebody polishes them up, but they're a statement, right? When he smiles, it's that Burt Reynolds smile, all right? The statement. It is. Yeah, right. To me, his teeth jump right out, like they shouldn't be even part of his body, so they look false to me. You know, they're not like natural teeth whitened. They look like false white teeth, 
Could that, that be a, could that, could, could that indicate like a, a false smile or like? Yeah. So, so what, what I'm saying is that he's trying to like, as, as inside of him, right? He's a psychopath. And if I said that out of turn. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. One of the things I want to ask you about is the two different eyes. Talk about that as well yeah. in a moment, but go ahead. Well, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm saying that because of the way that the eyes work, now you've got about 17 different types of psychopaths. They don't all kill people, all right? They don't all kill, you know, anybody, never mind people close to them. But um, looking at him, it's like two different brain patterns going on. If you look at other people, they say the eyes are the window to the soul, and I totally agree with that. I get a really good gauge and a look in somebody's eyes. I studied iridology as well. So mm. the coloring of their eyes, the actual um, tissue format, the, like daisy formation, you can see um, muscle structure. You can even see toxicity in certain parts of the body as well, looking at the eyes. And what so do you I, see with his? When I see with him is I see um, a blockage on the right hand. So I don't know if he's right or left-handed, you know, left hand, right hand side of the brain, right hand, left hand side of the brain. Okay. And what I see is a blockage of dead energy on the right hand side of him. All right, the right. So it's almost like, oh, yeah. it's a bit like looking at somebody with a stroke down one side of their face to me. The energy is not moving like it should. There's a blockage somewhere. There's a, a drop in connectivity. Between on the, the right side, you're correct. Yeah. I see it too now. You see it too now. Thank you. Uh -huh. So it means if you can imagine like water going up against a wall or a rock right it's banging it, it needs to be able to 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 transport from one side of the brain to the other by the frontal lobe all right mm -hmm. and so there's a problem with the frontal lobe the muscle in his i would say he has asperger's to severely autistic tendencies have been covered up because this man has learned how to make it look like he is normal like other people but in actual fact the, the room for maneuver over the years is getting smaller and smaller because of a frontal lobe problem of transporting signals from one side of the brain to the other. For me to explain a little bit more, you understand about muscular dystrophy and the myelin, you know that you need to transport the signals through to the muscles, right? And then it's a, the myelin doesn't get produced, you know, due to protein, so there's no carrier between the nerve endings and the muscles. All right, eventually it results in muscle weakness. Well, that's what I see looking at him with the brain's concern. I just want to, I just want to say to everybody also, um, Lara knows nothing about this guy. Okay. She has no, there's no history. I just want to be really clear. She hasn't read the history. I basically, I, watched you, the videos. I have, I have even abstained from doing that, even though that I really wanted to, I haven't done that because I like going in blind. It's the only way I can get a clear, um, take on somebody. I don't like it to be clouded with everything else. So you're bringing up a good point here. Um, in this image, he's leaning toward Cece, who's the baby. Oh, yeah, good point. And he's got Bella, who's the older daughter, on his, on his left, our right. Um, as you're looking at this, is there some kind of, because on the right there, he's got that blind thing, is there something in this photo that's that's pulling and actually it's a very good point the fat is leaning more to one child than the other it could be a vibrational thing as well not from the cc from the other child the older child that her name's is it bell bella? bella yeah the one in the orange on, on our right okay bella so the, 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 there's a likeness between the two of them and it's almost like they don't want to be identified you see by other people they don't want to ever have that um image shattered right so they tend to body swerve right anybody that's similar to them or can show them up in the weaknesses or the way that they are so there's a repulsion and in a repulsion with him when he's leaning more towards cc he's, he's vibing more in with her and away from the other child the other child notably is older so can see more flaws as well mm -hmm. all right more flaws can can perhaps you know older child sort of get under the radar a little bit Mm -hmm. um, he's being, it's easier to be more protective over the younger one too. All right. But if you notice mm. that, I mean, both of them are gorgeous children, absolutely stunning Beautiful. children. Beautiful. Beautiful children. And, um, as somebody high functioning, autistic, or, you know, sociopathic, you know, and it's the way that they feel they, because they can over years to hide how they are, mm -hmm. become very good at, at you know, 
bamboozling everybody to make it seem like they've got feeling and emotion and um you know but they're actually enacting everything out until one day it becomes too much to bear they can't mm-hmm. do it anymore the inner spirit completely rebels they'll, sh- they'll shut everything down shut mm-hmm. and they'll react um and so the one to me i do feel that there there is a distant look in the ch- i don't think everything was was entirely perfect in the home environment even though they're gorgeous looking children to me they look sad Hmm, that's interesting. So I, I, I don't see it. That they got the emotion and warmth from the dad that the you know the kids kids are really good at detecting stuff like this. They could have detected. I I I'm seeing here that the emotional warmth from their dad didn't match maybe the outside of how he looked. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Do- I'm. It's such a perfect picture. It's the kind of picture you'd you'd look at and go, you know, like it's one of those pictures that comes in a wallet. You know what I mean? You open the wallet and it's a, oh, I could put my family picture here, you know. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And and yet I I look at little Cece, who's who's the one he's leaning into, and I I do see I see a real sparkle, but I see a kind of sadness. Absolutely, I do feel he's also got an issue where other men are concerned, right? He is highly competitive with other men, mm. but he's not, he won't say it on the outside, all right? But he has an issue. I think there's been a, a distinct male repression. He's unable to bond with males, could possibly make it a problem if there was a male child. And, and Shanann, yeah, Shanann was not pregnant. not want to share his thunder with, with a, a male. Yeah, she, uh, they had, he had just discovered, I guess, two weeks prior that, uh, or a few weeks prior, that he, that his wife, Shanann, was pregnant with a boy. Oh my God, right, okay. All right. Well, yeah, that sheds a little bit more light on it. I think, I hadn't realized that she was far enough on, you know, to, to, to know. I think you mentioned that she was pregnant, yeah. but um, I think he, he, he can be the provider of girls, the looker after of the females. He is a ladies' man in that respect. But as a ladies' man, he, make no mistake about it, he's highly competitive. It's all about repressing other men. It's all about getting one over another men. It's all about him being top dog. You're bringing an interesting point up because Shanann was very, she was a Cap- uh, Capricorn. So oh. she was, yeah, and he's a Taurus. So she was very uh, go, go, go in her career. I mean, she was successful. And I, I wonder if it didn't spark his yeah. inability to keep up. Yes, absolutely. It really repressed his maleness. You know, the ego, the male ego is very fragile, Tori, you know, and hmm. um, you can see the extraordinary length is perfect. Even his white shirt's perfect. Now, I know having a picture, you know, if it's, planned you know everybody wants to look their best and wearing white is the best way to make your face look lighter you know it matches his teeth it goddamn matches his teeth right so here i'm thinking does anybody match their top to their teeth that's a bit extreme that's interesting let's take a look now i want to look at one of the pictures i want to show you next is with shanann and the girls but it's a picture that i chose that specifically is a little bit more i feel it was one of the true pictures I felt of Shanann. In other words, how she really felt in the relationship as opposed to her perky self. Because she was this, I mean, we've seen so many videos of, just so you know, Lara, she, had, okay, she sold uh, stuff online. And so as a result, we saw tons of her videos selling. So as a public, we got to know her in a way that we hadn't previously. Gavin, he's the tourist. He wants to be around every minute. Hi. Yes, I know. <laughs> right. So let's take a look at Shanann. And again, this was a picture that I felt was very telling uh, in terms of there's a moment. Come on, Chris, go away. <laughs> let me get the other picture. Let me just see if I can get it. I'm not very good at this, so let me try. Okay, there we go. Let's see if that works. Okay, Chris, we need to get rid of you. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Let's see. Need to get rid of Chris. That's the one. Yeah, this is the one that we need to. Yeah, um, it does not surprise me. She was incredibly successful and, you know, very driven woman. Oh, she's disappeared there. But I think she looks really sad in her eyes there. Oh, you can see her? Hold on. 
Yeah. Oh, you can. Okay, good. Because yeah, I'm seeing that, something else on my screen. Eyes. She's, mm-hmm. you know, our, our smile is almost like reluctant to smile there, but she's not smiling with her eyes. It's just her cheeks and her, and her mouth. Yeah. Uh, she has got the girls leaning on her, you know, she's, she, and, and she sounds like a hard working woman. So it could just have been a yeah. downtime and what have you. Absolutely stunning looking girl. Isn't, isn't she? she? Yeah. She's beautiful. Yeah. She just radiates a light. And it's probably that, you know, that really attracted him, you know, because of the lack of light with him. Oh. All right. It, it's, it's kind of mirrored in her, but I think a lot of jealousy, I think, because the more she did, the more demasculated he felt. Mm. And the more he had to prop up um, his failing ego. So he's got two issues. I think we've got two issues going on here. Mm-hmm. We've got the, he loves beautiful women clearly, or, you know, he wouldn't have been with Shanann. And she's in two gorgeous girls as well. Mm. Um, but his fragile ego that I believe was probably well, you know, pummeled in from when he was very small, um, he is a woman's man, not a man's man. You know, he spends his life, I think, trying to look the best male, to be the best male, to mm-hmm. for other women to pick him over other men. All right. To mm-hmm. um, he gets kicks out of that, but this this whole an entire family, and I find it interesting that of the male thing that she was pregnant with a, a young boy as well, and suddenly everything changed. Mm-hmm. Everything changed. Well, he has started that affair. Right. Yes. But yes. it was a, it was literally a six week time span that this just erupted. And I wonder when I look at her face, what's coming forward to me, Lara, and I just want to see if you see this too. I see just having known a little about her. I also see her inner conflict with needing, knowing she needs to play less than to keep him around. Yes. She's right, trying so, to dampen her own light. Does that make sense? Yes, that's exactly. You can see on one, the, the, the her left hand side of the, the, her face, but the light in both of her eyes, I feel, is very dumbed down. So it became more about keeping him because you've got to keep, as a woman, you've got to keep the family together. You know, you've got children. Mm-hmm. And also, after a while, you start to, to realize that you can't, You've got to try and prop the man's ego up as well. Otherwise, you're going to get the rough end of his, his, his tongue. So you, you recognize what he can't do. And the woman then does more to make up for what he can do. Then he'll punish her because she's stepping on male turf. Right. right? And you can see she's a very feminine woman. Got a very, because her nose is nice and strong. It's, it's, you know, it's not kinked or anything. It's straight. It's strong. She's mm-hmm. not got a bulging forehead, you know, like down where her eyebrows are. The eyebrows are well spaced, you know, together. She's got a wonderful wrinkle free skin, hasn't she? She's got amazing skin. So she's a woman that tries to compose herself and try and contain it and keep her family together no matter what. I yeah. don't believe she provoked him, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that that was, my sense was that um, it's kind of a rock and a hard place where it's kind of like, oh gosh, um, yeah. you know, I need to play less than, but as she played less than, he got more mad. So there's this kind That's of... The, inner, absolutely. That, and she's, know. she's very spiritual as well. She, she looks like she's a bridger between a crystal child and an indigo child. Now, indigos are cosmic bridgers, you know, they are they're designed to hold everything together. They're designed to interpret and receive the information from the cosmos, as well as, um, you know, pedal the boat and educate and teach other people and heal other people on a planet. And she's such a healer. Look at her. The light mm-hmm. radiates from her. She's, she's properly one foot indigo, one foot crystal. I don't even know how old she is. Cause that would probably give an indication how old she's is in she her, is. she, she died at 34, but she was um, probably there in her early thirties. Cause the children look younger in that. Yeah. Um, uh, this woman looks like she's about 27, 28. I, was I know she's probably about 31, 30. No, maybe 32 or 33. But I want to ask you a question about the children in that picture too. Because I'm looking at children that look very different. In other words, the difference between them posed with Chris and just in complete relax with mom. Do you, what Absolutely. Do you, what do you pick up? I mean, obviously, children are usually more relaxed with mom unless she's cray-cray. But 
I, I'm seeing a difference in Cece's eyes, which is the baby nearest us. Yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. And she is a day. I mean, mom looks such an angel and Cece looks like an angel. I can't quite um, see you Bella. Can't see, yeah, you can't see Bella. No, <laughs> no yeah. I can't quite see her face and stuff like that. But Cece, you can see the spacing between her eyes. She is more like her mom. She, she looks more like her mum, her forehead, everything looks like her mum. And that the energy, she's as crisp, because she, you can't have a crystal child or an indigo child unless they come through a mum that's high vibrational, all right? And mm -hmm. so mum's been there to, to bring these children forth. The younger one in particular, so angelic and so full of light, all right? Full yeah. of light. So this guy has got three females round about him that shine more light than he could possibly know, but also compensates for the lack of light he's able to show. Yeah, now you're bringing up a good point. So let's take a look, because um, I want to now look at the, uh, if we can, let's go look at this next picture. The next picture I want to bring up uh, is, let me just make sure I'm, come on. Okay. The, the next picture I want to bring up is going to be Chris, just right after the murders. And okay. this is when he's been arrested and he's, he's being shuffled into court. And I want you to look at that face, which I feel is completely different. And so I want to just, uh, from your point of view with looking at his face, who is he now as opposed to who was he? Got it? Okay, right, okay. okay so let's take a look. This is right after he was incarcerated. Can you see that? Yep, I can see him. So he's got glasses on. Yep. See how his, his chin and his lips pursed, you know, the bottom lip. He's got quite thin lips, hasn't he? You know, it's almost yeah. like, and the way that it's set his jawline and I'm drawn to his cheekbones up near, you know, the band of muscle that goes right over the top of the head. All right, where it, it looks really tight from his jaw near his eyes, right the way around to under his chin. And it's almost like he's in denial. It's like he has totally absconded any feeling, you know, where that's concerned. He doesn't even have a wrinkle on his forehead, Tori. You're right. He doesn't have a wrinkle. It's Neither of them do. It's interesting. I'm looking at, yeah. Yeah, and but for different reasons, I feel with him, different reasons entirely. He hasn't got a red mark on his neck or anything that can come up with stress. You know, like if emotionally, yeah. if you've got emotional stress, there's nothing on him blotchy wise rash wise anything like that that would indicate this man even batted an eyelid at this point he doesn't even look upset i wonder about those eyes too can you it's, his yeah. eyes look very different to me and now of course he's got the glasses but tell us about the eyes the, the right eye yep yeah, the right eye as you could well i'm going to point it out now as you can see the eyelid is a bit shut it's very dead but it looks like the eye of a blind man on the right one the left one whereas before we saw a bit of light coming from the left one the left one now looks very dark very dull like it's joined ranks with the right one right it's joined ranks the eyelid on the right one is is kind of like a little bit shut because the muscles seem to have kind of given up on that side um, perhaps at the strain of holding everything together, you know, mentally, because the, the mind is a remarkable thing. Um, I can actually see a ridge from the temples, all right, from one temple to another. I don't know if you can see it now that I pointed it out. You know, people have wrinkles in their forehead. He's actually, it looks like a Frankenstein head with the bolts at the side. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's, it's like this Neanderthal head. He's, is he dark eyed? He's very rage. He's got a lot of rage going on. I yes, mean, I that's what that. Well, dark eyed to me. Now, dark eyed people, right, are Neanderthal genes, okay? So you've got to understand that the, the primitive coding, right, on his DNA is, is Neanderthal. If everything else aligns with that, of course, then he's going to act like a Neanderthal, you know, guy. Um, I'm still maintaining, I see no feeling in his eyes whatsoever. Me neither. I, it, I, it looks like. Again, I'm going to go to the frontal lobe part. He has not a wrinkle on. It's like his brain hasn't even registered it. He's trying to keep it together. I don't think he's even trying to keep it together. I think it's what's called, dim you know, when the, we have over here diminished responsibility. You, what you see is a guy that actually has honestly in his head disconnected and got diminished responsibility. He does not know how to feel about anything. And now you can see it. He's been like that all his life. 
everything, every emotion that you've probably seen, even being loving to the children, is enacted. So, so my question on this is... Expression. Sorry, it's facial expression and looking at the face. I'd be interested to actually see a video of him talking to see whether it backs up what I'm saying. But even the muscles are set in his face, right? That, that it, it looks like the, the muscles are non-responsive. So when he talks, right, in, you would see it's kind of like a puppet without any wrinkles and stuff. They just go through the motions. So I would love to see a video on him. Do you have a video? I do. I do. Yeah. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to just, just wait, everyone. I'm just going to pause this video and then I'm going to pull up a, um, uh, I'm just going to pull up a video, the video uh, for Lara to look at. So hold on. Has anybody actually seen this man emotional no. at all? No. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, uh, we're recording. So what were you saying? Has anybody actually seen this man um, emotional at all? No. Um, right. So you saw his, I just so hold on one second, Lara. I just want to let everybody know we took a pause so Lara could see the, the rocking interview and a little bit of him walking into the court. Um, I didn't want to show all that again because you've seen it a hundred times. So Lara, now that you've so so now that you've seen him in motion. Yeah. The man he said, um, I didn't realize, I didn't even know that he accused his wife of strangling the children and he flew into a blind rage. That was his first story. And then it came out obviously we all knew he killed them, but he was accusing her at first. Okay, well I want to go back to that, right? Because I know as an intuitive that um and, and you'll know yourself that when you're actually reading for other people, men and you know, even women, and I'll, I'll say to women, what did the man say up front, right? Because they rarely stray from that, okay? Discount all the wording. How did he present at the start? Right, no right. No matter how the story changed further on, right? Mm -hmm. The man did not look upset one jot that even is allegedly at the time that he said Shanann had strangled his children. There was not even a tear. There was nothing, right? Yeah, even the cops said that. They were like... Yeah, right, remove all that. There's no emotion on the man's face. And it looks to me, from the various, you know, pictures and things that you've shown me, that that maintained all the way along, right? Lack of emotion, lack of yes. muscle, not even a twitch under the eye, right? None. Total constrainment, but constrainment that has been well practiced over many, many years, right. all right? And I maintain that this man was... Um, I'm going back to that. I think he's obviously got some sort of like psychopath condition, high functioning sociopath, as Sherlock Holmes would put it. You know, <laughs> they they really get by in life by you know profiling everybody and um, and stuff. That it's a shocking, shocking story. I know. I know. And that's the thing is that I want you to now look. Okay, so so we've gone through um, the first picture with his children. Now you've seen him a little bit around um, right after the crime, how it's just like, I almost saw a relief in him, um, like a deadening of like, it's over. Like, in other words, he's no longer playing a role. That was kind of as you were talking what I was feeling was that deadness was like, he finally gets to be the dead person he is. That's exactly what I was trying to say. I think you probably said it in better words there actually, Tori. Tori um, the, the years of actually role playing, right. Right, eventually gets to be his lack of empathic self. Yeah. Let's the relief take a look. must have been enormous. Sorry, say that again? The relief for him must have been enormous. And for that reason, he's going to settle well into prison life, if you know what I mean. He's going to settle well because he doesn't, he doesn't have to be anybody else. He gets to just play one role. Everybody right. knows what he's done. And he can, you know, start and relax a bit more into that. I've, you know, I have got a feeling he's, he's been mean to other people. Mm -hmm. I think it's just been very well hidden. I think... Um, it's that, funny because I, no one says anything. And I think what's interesting, though, is he even says he had no girlfriends in high school. And, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of energetic around his mother. And so I'd love to do, we'll do it another time. We'll do an energetic of that family so we can talk about it. But um, here, this, can you see this current picture? Yeah. Okay. So in this picture, this mm -hmm. is... Uh, Chris Watts incarcerated. He's finally in the final prison. 
he's been he's been given however many life sentences and this is how he is now i mean look at that difference that's shocking it's a different person isn't it but it's like he gets to be who so this is this is who he is if you look at his face straight on cover the forehead up right and look from the eyebrows down the way okay now we've not got the finely trimmed you know beard it's kind of shaved off his head right. his hair but his right eye is very dark isn't it and very almost like set into his socket and his left eye has taken on a different form again entirely. Yeah. Entirely. He looks like two halves of different people. Doesn't he? Yeah. It's yeah. scary to me. I don't know what it is, but I feel frightened. He's got tiny ears. He's got feminine energy running through him rather than masculine energy. Right? He's got a fairly well set jaw, but the ears don't match it, which means something brain-wise, the shape of his skull. We haven't got one of the back of his head, have we? I do. I actually do. There's, um, I'll have to get it to you, um, but it oh, is... Uh, do that. Yeah, I'm interested okay. to see if, if um, the shape of the back of the head in relation to the ears and the jaw, but it's almost like in his development, you know, um, when he was being, you know, made as a baby, that it's gone into certain attributes, right? You can see by the cheeks, they're well-developed, almost like a monkey-looking face. Mm -hmm. That looks like, like a monkey, Neanderthal-looking face with small monkey ears. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking up as we're talking. Um, I'm just looking up uh, images now to see if I can find the back of his head um, because I know there probably is one uh, from prison uh, when they were taking images of him, but I'll have to look. So well, isn't it ironic, isn't it ironic that, that, that having such an issue with other men, comparing himself to other men, feeling um, that he couldn't measure up, you know, so there was a real sort of always wanting to be top dog. And now he's in a prison surrounded by men that are all vying to be top dog. Wow. Yeah. That's um, quite some well done. Spectacular. Yeah. It's kind of, oh, wait a minute. I think I have it. Yes, I do. How, how about that? Let me just see if I can... Um, if I can download it. Yeah, so what I wanted to do, everybody, let me just take a quick screenshot of it because it's a picture of him with the kids and it's really fascinating. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, and it's also, um, all right, hopefully all my fantastical skills here have paid off. Let me see where Incredible, I like, let's see. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see if I can share a different picture. So um, one of the things that I want to say as we're looking at this also is that this, this guy is completely maniacal. I mean, there is nothing normal about him. Um, and it, it, it's really, I think, it, I want to say to you, Lara, that we're seeing an entirely new, an, a, an entirely new level of of a killer here that I don't think we've really absolutely seen I'm, I'm betting that he's got quite a transfixing voice is he because the only thing I can think of is on the lack of facial movement it's almost like he's alien like he's an alien yeah and it's funny because his I found him I was not bothered by his voice um but I found him to be in some ways oddly lyrical but I'll do you can you see this other picture I can. I can see the back of his, his head on the right hand one there. Perfect. And That's got, the one. He's got quite a small brain, hasn't he? He's got quite a small brain. It falls away at the back and kind of goes right. in with small ears. Yeah. So it looks like that he's got a lot of feminine energy in there in total conflict with his, ma his, his masculine energy. Hence, mm. probably why he tries so hard to look like the image of what he thinks society finds as an attractive man. Right. Sexual issues, I would say there as well. And I think that there's probably tendencies in an area that he hasn't been able to express to other people or to, uh, you know, least of all to his wife um, on what his desires actually are. And well, probably spent a long time trying to cover them up as well. That's my um, feeling. Yeah, he's, he was getting that from the mistress. He was getting uh, a lot of anal like, sex. He was getting a lot of stuff that, you know, crazy wild stuff, you know. Um, yeah, so, you yeah. So yeah. it, it, it so makes that, a lot of sense. Like any area, of, it becomes like a conflict zone in the middle when, when two parts of your life become so extreme or far apart or take you to a place, you know, that is far apart from the reality that you're in and it causes a conflict internally, it grows and grows. And this man is so not equipped to deal with it. 
So you're bringing up another point that I want to ask about, and this is going to sound like I'm one of those people that I keep feeling this odd feeling, like I keep feeling like the children are with their, their grandparents, Shanann's mom and dad. And, and what's bothering me is we know they're dead, right? We know they were brutally murdered. But I just wonder if they were supposed to have been killed. I almost feel like it was some, there was something wrong in that. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I, I know this is, I hope this doesn't insult people, but I kind of feel like they weren't supposed to die. No. I once dealt with, I used to be an agony aunt on a, on a site called Psychic Fairy. And I once had to deal with a poor, poor mum whose daughter and three grandchildren had been murdered by the, the daughter's husband. Mm -hmm. And then he hung himself afterwards. So he didn't, they didn't get that retribution. They didn't get to find out, you know, what happened behind it. Why did he do that? Because he, he technically wiped out two, because the daughter was her only child. So the mm. grandchildren, the daughter, it technically wiped out two generations. All right. And, you know, what makes somebody do that? And, and, and how can you, if, if you're born into a certain part of your life, you can't say that that's the way that that life's meant to be, that they were meant to end. But really, this guy, his life, his direction, his destiny. All right. Some things happen that are an anomaly. Maybe they're caused by ripples in the timeline. Maybe they're caused by people, you know, a collective amount of people that are not you know, they're doing different things or different actions and it's, it's causing changes to happen, which at a certain point all meet. Perhaps that meets in a certain individual energetically mm -hmm. and that person then reacts to that, right? There, and, and, and because he can't, he or she can't identify where it's coming from. Um, yeah, I keep feeling like... Sense? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I keep feeling, Lara, every minute of this, I keep feeling like... It's like he, the big thing is, is that those children should have lived. And I know that's like, I know that's like, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking, you know, but, you know, we talk about family annihilators and I think that he's an annihilator that didn't, accidentally didn't kill himself, if that makes sense. Like, he I played God. He, the God complex. He, he acted like God. He acted like he was the one that chose whether they lived or died. Children are innocent. God says, suffer thy children. You know, the children are innocent. They were not a part of that. Why do that? Those children were not meant to die. They yeah, that's what I felt. And I keep feeling like, you know, um, I keep feeling like they weren't supposed to die. Now, one more thing, and I know that um, everybody, we're going, we're going a little long. I love it, though. So question for you, Lara, and this is super, yeah. like, okay, so we know he had a mistress. Um, and the thing is, is that the, you know, people were saying to me, cause I was like, I was saying like, when the police called her in, she kind of wiped out her phone, her, uh, her texts. And I got to tell you, I would wipe out my texts as well, especially because they were racy. She was sending him nude pictures, you know? So, but what I want to find out is not knowing the situation energetically, you know, how much did she cause it or did it just blow him out of the water? I mean, what was the, what was the, the moment? Like what was happening with him that he energetically, what do you feel looking at these images, looking at these pictures of these people? Um, what are you picking up? Oops. Why, oh, why did he decide whether the children should live or die? Do you mean? I'm sorry. Are you saying, you're asking why did he decide whether the children should live or die? Well, that and also what, you know, what you feel like, do you feel that the mistress was somehow connected um, or not? I mean, I don't feel... I, I mean, listen, there's, there's two reasons why, he would, obviously, he's trying to wipe out any... I mean, how he honestly thought he was going to get away with it for a start. I but do too. If, if those children saw him kill the mum, there's only one way he can eradicate that from, and that, that's to, to take the children out. So I don't know what the story is, right? I said I would go and look it up afterwards, obviously. Right, you know, right. But um, to me, we're trying to understand somebody who's evil, vindictive, narcissistic, who's, ab who's technically what we'd call mad, all right? You can't understand a mad person with a normal brain. 
you need to get into the the actual madness of that you know in the hypermanic state of them the paranoia yeah. state of um, i don't know what happened but in some way he, he would have taken the children out either either so he had no responsibility when he went off with his woman all right because i do feel that this woman manipulated him i do feel that the women you know in a, in a relationship crisis if a man sees a naked other woman then he's not thinking about his wife okay he wants to be able to feel what she can give him this other woman right to have a clean break right most people would divorce and pay child maintenance you know what's mm -hmm. the difference of you know that and making the decision to actually annihilate his whole family right what was the trigger because there has to be a trigger that's what i'm saying is that i well first of all they were in a tremendous amount of debt but the thing that's that that i think and they always had they seem to always have a debt problem um and whose fault or whatever but what was interesting was he never seemed to be affected by it but then again i wonder if that was giving us a foreshadowing of who he really was nothing ever really affected him i mean he he's very problem most people like 90 percent of people you know what i mean when they've got that they're, they're, they're worrying they're stressing then they're crying or they're asking for help or trying to sort it out but to kind of that's numb yeah but right? to not but even I, acknowledge it you know not no. even go yeah we're you know he 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 just didn't i think that's the thing is that i would have like gone what the you know or something some normal person so they had a lot of issues going on and obviously this other woman um didn't have you know that level of issue i do have one one more thing i want to bring up which is i had a hit the other day that i think he was for lack of a better way i think he was an oil well waiting to blow and yeah. I think the pressure was there. And I wondered if he actually did get a divorce from Shinan and the kids, I wondered if eventually he wouldn't have killed his mistress. Because I wonder if that rage was, in other words, she would have been a worse choice is what I'm trying to say. In other words, she was already a little needy. He had to talk her down. Shanann wasn't like that. She was very, you know, self-sufficient. She would have been fine in the whole thing, right? But the, I'm wondering. You can see how you've got the two women in complete, complete differently to each other. Com complete, co the conflict was him. Yeah. Right? It grew to a massive thing within him. Like you're saying, oil well erupting. It had to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because the women were so different. Right? Like, he perhaps blamed Shannon and, and the children for the lack of money or the money problems. He didn't have the money to be able to pursue the other women. Oh, like but he, he did. Them. Here's the funny thing. He was using coupons the very last date. He even said, this is what got me going, um, Lara, is the very last date they had. He said, and he, in, his, in another interview he did, he said, I kind of wish Nikki, that was the girlfriend, had kind of offered to pay. Now, what got me in that, because he had to put it on the credit card, which Shanann was going to see. She never saw anything because he was using, like, gift certificates that he'd won at work for different dates. Wow. So what I'm wondering is, when he said that about the girlfriend, I wish she had paid, at, you know, that last time. I, and he, I'm paraphrasing, but I wonder if that was the beginning of the seedling of his resentment toward her. Okay. You see how the, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I think eventually he would have found that any woman was going to make this guy blow. I mean, he was just going to be. Absolutely. Because you've got one side of where their sexual fantasies are being lived. But when, when she becomes a responsibility and needy like that, and he's having to cut coupons and this, that, and the other, one must start to ask questions of what. Oh, oh, when I say coupons, I want to be clear. They're not coupon coupons. They're like um, gift certificates from work for various uh, restaurants. So he had, okay. um, he had free meals at different restaurants that he was using, like gift cards. So he was using them for dating Nikki. But then when the last date they had before he murdered Shanann, he used the credit card and Shanann said, what was this for? Because it shows up on her bill. Okay, then. Right, that, that's what you mean by their vouchers. Right, vouchers, that's what I meant. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Lost in translation. No, no, it's, it is. Oh, it's I'm the not, whole two, two countries like separated, right, by common language. Yeah. Um, so, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so in that, in that um, I wonder, though, that's why I keep thinking if the children were not meant to be killed, they were just, they needed to be annihilated because he'd already made the mistake. It was kind of like, well, I've gained 30 pounds, which another 30. Yeah. That's right. And there we have Nikki who potentially, let's go back to that because I kind of got your energy into that moment. When he said she, you know, why didn't she pay? Like you said, it was one more thing that I felt, oh my gosh, if he had divorced Shanann and married this woman, he would have killed her. Probably. Yeah. Because I think like, a woman like that is, is part time. But to, to make her full time, he couldn't, he can't cope emotionally with another woman. He not who's, not who's and, feeding that. Yeah. 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 That couldn't sustain herself. That she was looking for a man to look after her. But as Shanann was, very much could, could be self-sufficient and she could look after all of them. Well, I want to be, I want to be clear about that too. Nikki had a very good job. But I do feel that when you say she couldn't be self-sufficient, I want to say that I don't feel that it's not necessarily a monetary self-sufficiency. Emotional. It's an emotional one. And I want to be clear with that because I think that ultimately, you know, Nikki can take care of herself. She did have a decent career. She was making money. But the thing is, is that I think she was much more needy than Shanann. And I think she was going to eventually get herself murdered by him if he left Shanann for her. Yeah. I think his rage was going to come out. What, what's your hit on that? Looking at the I picture. Think he's a, a massively passive aggressive um, white rage sort of person, you know, where mm -hmm. he executes things, you know, very definitely. He probably does that with a lot of things. You can tell that by the facial hair and the way that it's trimmed within an inch of its life. And, you know, but there's that tiny little bit there under the, left nostril that was kind of a mm. little bit more overgrown like there was something not quite perfect like he tried too hard and it's like cutting a grass when when you miss a little bit in the side right but that that person in that frame of mind honestly thinks they've cut the grass within an inch of its life and everything looks perfect right and and you know i just want to really validate this and say that one of the things that really came out mm -hmm. in Anne's family is that they really loved him that you know he was they had no indication that this was coming, right? And I think it also had to do with the distance, but I also think that it had to do with the fact that he was so good at hiding. And are we looking at a new breed of criminal that we need to start paying attention? It, it has been there all along, you know, with various, I mean, I have had dealings over in the UK with, because I've helped the police with a lot of investigations and stuff, but I've even seen a couple of, one police officer, um, took a um, like a saw to his wife's neck right yeah like he just lost it one day the pressure you know that mm. the guy's totally rehabilitated and everything and the wife is fine you know eventually she's not fine she's you know and the um, he turned to religion you know and he he really went into a different place obviously came out of the police force and spent a time in jail and what have you and you know her neck was in a bit of a mess and um, you know, he'd caught wind that she'd been seeing another man and he just lost it, mm -hmm. right? So it's about something change. If they're really stressed and something changes very drastically, like very suddenly that they can't pre-anticipate, it, it's like a trigger that goes off in them. And by God, they go, like you're saying, he was able to be like the perfect guy to everybody. But then I've seen people, you know, over here that are perfect in every way and nobody would ever think that they've done the things that they, they do, you know, when they're sitting next to them in the coffee shop. Right, I see that as well, you know. And I'm like, that guy's killed two people, you know. It's, <laughs> you know <laughs> I used to have more of that, and and thank God I don't anymore because I'm kind of like, you know, um, yeah, that gets it, into the cray cray. It does, make but you so think what I want to do, yeah, is I want to just say, you like, uh, you know, as always, I love hanging with you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make my way up to Scotland, so we're gonna get to see one another. But what I want to yep. do is I'm going to at the end of this, everybody, there'll be there are gonna be some cards here, so you can find Lara on YouTube. And like I said, she's just starting her channel and I'll also have her website there. Um, but for, for everybody now, would you just tell us your website so people can find you? 
Well, at the moment, I'm having it reconstructed at the moment, but it's, it's www.lara-wells.com. All right? Wells, W-E-L-L-S? W-E-L-L-S dot com, yep. Okay. And it should be online by the end of next week, I'm told so. Well, probably by the time everybody gets around to it. So well, what I want to do is <laughs> I want to say thank you to you. And also let's do, let's do something with um, his family and their faces. I'd like to do a little bit more in the That's family thing. Um, yeah. because I'd like to go deeper into that kind of looking at, not as a blame thing, but just energy that's going what through. Made him, what made him be the person, what, who, how, and energy. Yeah, a little bit more on that. And I think we've done a good uh, ground laying today. And to everybody else, I want to say thank you for joining us. And of course, Lara is a delight, isn't she? And I know. <laughs> You're just wonderful, so yeah, you're amazing. <laughs> so, um, we are gonna play, and um, I think we should just have an astro off where we just like talk about you know different different criminals and their astrology stuff. So, we're gonna talk about some of that later. In the meantime, Lara, thank you so much. I will talk to you soon. I know everybody, please, please, please like the video that makes such a difference on YouTube. Subscribe, and it's somewhere around here. Subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll get notices. When, when I am either live or recorded. And Lara, thank you so much. Guys, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> you cracked me thank up. You.